Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today we have a message from the Spirit of God. And the title of the message is Winning Through Praise. How to win in life through a praise. And we're going to be reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 150, from verse 1 to 6. The last psalm. The book of Psalms has 150 chapters. And this is the chapter that closes the psalm. And the Bible says the ending of a matter is always better than the beginning thereof. So God preserved this psalm to be the last among the psalms because it mattered the most. So he allowed David, he allowed the psalms to be written, all of them. And remember Jesus said, the last wine is better. He preserved this psalm so that after we go through all the other psalms, the most important psalms, will remain in our minds and as you know what you say last is likely to remain in people's minds so we must see the value of this psalm as even we learn about how to win through praise for the spirit of god anointed me this morning to come and teach his church how to win in life through praise he told me nothing can defeat praise Nothing can overcome praise. And he said, where the prayers fail, praise. When you engage praise, when you engage praise, where the prayers fail. Because sometimes people can be found in situations where you don't even know how to tell God. Paul and Silas were found in such a situation. They were in prison. They had been beaten. Their bodies were afflicted. They could not even know how to, um, um, to, to pray or something. And they started to sing praises in the jail. And they showed the hand of God. So Psalm 150, 150 verse 1 to 6. And we're going to be reading this psalm together in unison for the glory of God. As I ask you again to stand on your feet without getting tired. Because that is how to remain young. Hallelujah. So, I want you to prepare your voice. We have the Bible on the screens. We are reading from the New King James Version. That is the version we are reading from, all of us together on our screens. And let's start, let's go together. One, two, three, four, go. This is to say, as a child of God, the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you. But when you have tried everything else, and what you know does not work, the last thing you must do is praise. David had taught God many things, millions of many good things, but the last thing that was done in the book of Psalms was praise. And today, I want us to check what we came with to praise. Now, as you stand like that, in a few seconds you'll sit. By this psalm, we understand that the perfect way to praise the Lord is to sing. And not only to sing, to sing with instruments in our hands. To sing with Timbrance, to sing with a flute, to sing with stringed instruments, to allow the noises 
of good orchestra before the Lord. So we understand the guitar was not meant for the bar. And the kayamba was not meant for the nightclub. So we understand these instruments were meant for a Christian to use in the house of God for praise. We understand they are not supposed to be for the longer man. We understand it is not supposed to be for the kandam bongo man. We understand it's not supposed to be for any other song. It's supposed to be for the song of the Lord. So Psalms 150 begins to tell us the mind to make instruments of praise was from God. It is God who designed this instrument for his own praise. Therefore, the perfect way to praise is to give him a shout, is to speak words about him, is to sing the wonderful works of God, is to sing about his power, is to sing about his character, is to sing about his abilities, is to sing about his goodness, and all the wonderful promises concerning us, his creation. We understand this is the perfect will of God. And so I want to hear this keyboard tested because we're gonna praise before we end this service. We, 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 we're gonna do a real praise. I'm telling you, tell your neighbor, if you have shoes that can stop you from dancing, start to remove those shoes. We have a nice floor. Our floor is nice. We have, we have nice clean tiles. Tell your neighbor, if your jacket is heavy, you're gonna remove it. Because we're gonna give our God a real praise today. According to the will of God. My God, my God, my God, my God, we're gonna give God some glory in here. We're gonna give God some praise in here. We're gonna minister to God this morning through our mouth, through our instruments. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I understand in the Bible there is one man that lived and died in victory. He fought many battles, but none of those battles took him out. He had many enemies left, right, center. But none of those enemies took him out. Even the lion hated him. Even the bear hated him. But the Spirit of God gave him victory every day. This man is called David. And we know this man as the best dancer that ever lived. He danced until his clothes fell off. Now we begin to see the victory of David. We don't see a lot of prayer, but we see a lot of singing in the life of David. We don't see a lot of memory. We don't see a lot of complaining, but we see a man who knew how to praise his God. Have your seats for five minutes, and then we're gonna do a real praise. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them welcome to Shiloh, the house of God. Hallelujah. How to win through praise? I will be teaching a series of messages. So I will not complete this message. But God giving us grace. We shall continue. Number one, how to win through grace, the praise, is praise projects our mind and focus on God. Praise focuses you on God rather than your troubles. 
If you are not a praiser, your troubles and the calamities of this world soon derail you from God. Brothers and sisters, we have so much evil happening on earth today. If you look at your TV, every news, you'll see a suicide, a murder, a stealing, a corruption. There is no longer good news everywhere you go. And for us to keep our sanity, we have to become praisers. If you're going to be able to overcome focusing on the negative, the best wisdom is to praise. So Isaiah 26 verse 3, it tells us how praise focuses us on God. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. It is impossible to stay your mind on God if you are not a praiser. Because praise does not need for you to be in a church. You can be driving and there is a song in your spirit. You can be in your shower and there is a song in your spirit. You can be cooking, there is a song in your spirit. So your mind is stayed on God when you know how to give him praise. You ought to understand when you are washing your utensils how to stop a little bit and use the spoon and the fork and put them together and give God a little dance in the kitchen before you cook. It will keep your mind stayed on God. If you don't want to go into insanity, praise him. Today we have a lot of mental problems because of the problems of this world. But the ending dot to these mental problems is praise. Tell your name, but if you want to be safe in your head, if nowadays you don't need a psychiatrist, praise him. Keep your mind focused on God. There is no other hope under heaven today because husbands are letting down their wives. Wives are letting down their husbands. Children are disappointing their parents. All over the world, we see a scenario that the Bible promised and said, in the last days, just like it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. In the last days before I come, just like evil in the days of Sodom, in the days of Lut, so shall it be. Evil is increasing all around us and we have to learn the ministry of praise so that we can keep our sanity. Amen. Number two, praise magnifies God in our hearts. God overshadows the worries and cares in our hearts. When we make God bigger, and mightier than our challenges. Praise silences the demonic voices of defeat and their persuasive language of hopelessness. Demons have a lot of words to tell you in your mind. Hopelessness. How you will be defeated. How this and that will never work. How you will never come out of that hospital bed. Demons inject voices of defeat in our mind and one of the ways to overcome those voices is to praise the Lord for when you praise him you magnify him you speak of his greatness you speak of his wonderful works you talk about his grace and mercy endures forever and as you do that you begin to deal and blow to the voices of demons why we have a lot of calamities and people taking their lives is because demons are at work in people's minds because people have stopped praising the Lord. Praise destroys the negative faith in the enemy. When you believe in evil, how great evil is, then you believe in God, the enemy prevails. But praise 
keeps you singing about the goodness of God, not the evil of God. So you exalt goodness of God and evil dissipates. Evil becomes nothing. You trample it under your foot when you praise because you magnify the Lord. Number three, praise is an expression of our trust in God. When you praise God in the midst of whatever challenges, it is an expression that you trust him. Paul and Silas were kept in prison, fastened in stocks, in chains. It was dark in there. There was no light. But they praised him, implying that they trusted in God who can deliver them. Praise is what you should do when you don't know what to do. Praise is what you should do to show God that you trust him. Very quickly, let me talk about some benefits of trusting in God. Because the perfect way to show God you trust him is to praise him, even in your midst, in your challenge. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5 to 8, we see him talking about the benefit of trusting in God. And when you praise God, you begin to reap the benefit of the trust. Thus says the Lord, cast is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. It means when you lift your heart from trusting in the Lord and start praising men, praising men. When you say, I can't live without my husband, now you become cursed because you are putting your trust in a man who can die on you any time. When you begin to say, I can't live without so and so, you are beginning to put your trust on man. And the Bible says you are cursed. Look at your neighbor and say, whom do you trust? The person you praise most is the one you trust. When your children are schooling, they have gotten uh, their degree and their master's degree. And as a parent, you remove your eyes from the Lord who helps you to raise them. And you start to trust them for your provision. And they say, with my children, I know I am sorted. Then you enter a place called a curse. God at all times wants everyone to trust him with their mind and their soul and their everything. Amen. And the Bible continues to say he will put their trust in man. Instead of praising God, they praise man. They start to say what they can't do without man. They start to look up to man. If your heart broken because your uncle never gets you a job, then you are under this condition. That's why you are angry. That's why you are no longer happy. Because the people you trusted let you down. When you are, you are praising men and trusting what they can do for you, I am telling you, you are in opposition with God. There is a place where men can be used by God. But look up and give God the glory. David said, I will look up to the mountains. For where does my help come from? My help comes from thee, O God. The people who don't know how to trust in God are a very disappointed lot. The people who are committing suicide are the people who trusted people. Now they are so disappointed with people, they take their life. Slap your neighbor, say, trust in God. And the best way is to praise him. Hallelujah. The Bible continues to tell us, the man who does not trust God, he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. It is demonic not to trust God. And then the Bible continues to tell us now the benefit of trust. He says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. And he says, 
in verse 8 for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when it comes Ooh. but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought this kind of a man, this kind of a woman is not anxious for anything. When the heat of the troubles come, they have peace because they are blessed by the Lord. Nor will they cease from yielding fruit. I have come to know the moment you look up to people so much, you slow down. Because I guarantee you sooner or later, they will become the very disappointment you feared. Hallelujah. Slap your neighbor at the back and tell them, come out of there. You are putting your life in the hands of men. You are putting your life in the hands of people. And what they can do for you, tell them, come out of there. With that mentality, you can't survive for long. Tell your neighbor, shed of that mentality. If you continue like that, how long will you survive? Because this is a curse. Woman, it does not matter whether you are single or married. It does not matter whether you are divorced with children. Look up to God. He will use you to raise those children. He will provide what it takes to raise those children. They will become great men and women. They will become leaders. God will raise those children. Even if you are single, you don't need to be desperate for any man. Brother, if the little girl ran away from you and, you and she don't want you and you took her to university and you paid school fees na pesa ya kuchoma mind and now you are bitter because she is more educated than you stop looking up to the woman look up to God he has many, many, many daughters he can give you many of them he has other more beautiful than the one who is letting you down there is no need to get bitter there is no need to take your life look up to God he will bless you the way he blessed Pastor Charles he will give you a calling the way he called Pastor Charles he will give you a purpose the way he gave me a purpose hallelujah Slap your neighbor, say, why are you complaining about people? That is a weakness. Do not depend on people to recommend you or commend you or commend your Facebook. People don't give me any worth. My worth comes from above. For promotion does not come from east or west, but promotion comes from above, from the father of light, in whose shadow there is no turning. My promotion does not come from how many comments you comment my message. My promotion does not come from how many comments you comment when I write something. My promotion comes from above. Today you put a picture looking like this, nobody commented. You put another one looking like it is. Nobody commended. You are desperate for people's comments. Tell your neighbor, come out of there. <laughs> so, your worth is not in what people say. Your worth is in what thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. We can look at some. We can look at some. Thirty-four, verse one to three. We begin to see. How praise helps us to trust the Lord. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Fast forward, please. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Verse 5. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all 
his troubles. Verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh my God, the opposite of blessing is a curse. And the Bible says, blessed is every man and the woman for this matter. Who trusts in the Lord. I don't know about you, but my heart settles in the Lord. Even if I was all alone in this whole world, I would still trust in him. I will put my confidence in him rather than man. Hallelujah. Number four, praise glorifies God. It gives God his due honor, thankfulness, and respect. It acknowledges God's place in your life as your creator and your benefactor. So praise glorifies God. When you praise him, you glorify him. You acknowledge him as your creator and your benefactor. You honor him and you give him thanks and you give him respect when you praise him. Number five, praise ministers to God. Praise ministers to God. To minister means to meet someone's need. God created the universe. He has everything at his disposal. But God has only one need that he can never meet. He can never worship himself. Neither can he praise himself. You will never see God clapping for himself, singing a song for himself. That is why he created you and I, because that need can only be met by his creation. Hallelujah. That is why everything wakes up in the morning. The cow will mow in the morning. The birds will wake up early in the morning and praise the Lord. The trees will sway and praise him. The universe bows before him. But we cannot be so high-headed and prideful. We can never praise our creator. One of the things that God requires of our relationship is that we may give him what he doesn't have. And he needs praise. So when you praise him, you minister to him. The same way you feel when he heals you, you feel good. When he meets your needs, you feel good. When God comes through for you, you feel so nice. You ought to make God feel the same. Because when you worship him, you praise him, you are meeting a need he can never meet. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor saying, God has one little request. Can you praise him? Can you minister to him? Prayer is not ministry to the Lord. Prayer is fellowship. For through prayer you present your needs and also you communicate, you commune. That's not ministry. Prayer does not give anything to God. But praise is when you give yourself and your mouth and you give to God something. He can't give himself. God is rich in all things. He may not need you for anything else. He only needs you as a worshiper and a praiser of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number six, praise invites the presence of God. But let me say number seven, so I come back to six. Praise is an expression of our faith towards God. When you praise God, actually you are expressing your faith. Because Paul and Silas didn't know how to come out of prison. But somehow, they decided to praise him, as expressing their faith that they know he will deliver them. So when you praise him, you are simply expressing your faith that no matter what is going around you, you are praising the one who you know will rescue you. It's an expression of your faith. People who don't praise the Lord, failure to praise the Lord is a manifestation of faithlessness. You cannot have faith in God and not praise Him. You cannot believe in God and not talk about His greatness. David is a man who kept talking about the greatness of God, praising Him all the time. 
because he was projecting his faith that way. Hallelujah. The last point, which was number six, which is number six, which I wanted to express, is that praise invites the presence of God in Psalms 22, verse 3. Psalms 22, verse 3. Praise invites the presence of God. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. This is where they, they pick the statement, God dwells in the praises of his people. The Bible says, he says God is holy. And the, one of the ways we enthrone him in our situation is to praise him. Paul and Silas enthroned him in their situation. God visited them in that prison when they praised him. So God, praise invites the presence of God. Hallelujah. There are three things that you find when you are in the presence of God. There could be more, but these are major. Number one, the presence of God sanctifies you. The presence of God separates you as a holy person for God. When you praise him, it is a time of sanctification. So praise will sanctify a man. According to Exodus chapter 33, verse 14, you can see how praise, how the presence of God sanctified them. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And then he continues in verse 15. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here, verse 16. For how then will it be known that your people and her eye have found grace in your sight except you go with us? So we shall be separate. The word separate means sanctified. Separated for you. Separated from hunger and thirst. And our enemies... If your presence don't go with us, if we don't have your presence in our midst, we are not sanctified. The word sanctify again means set apart from God's holy use. When something is sanctified, it simply means it is set apart from God's holy use. It therefore means the presence of God sanctifies the church and that presence comes through praise. So we shall... So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. If you don't want to be like your grandfather who worshipped the enemy, perhaps. If you don't want to end up like your family and the family curses that you see, be a praiser of God. I understand my grandmother never knew how to worship to praise him. My people never knew how to praise him. But I can be indifferent when I praise him because I'm doing something they never did. Hallelujah. It is not difficult to overcome generational curses. Just be a praiser of God. It is not difficult to overcome the demonic altars of your family. Just praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. For they never did these things. They invited the enemy. But you invite God in your life through praise. And when he comes, he sets you apart. I prophesy. You might as well be the first person to build your own house in your family. You might as well be the first person to fly to America. You might be the first person to buy a Range Rover house. You might be the first person to be a missionary. You might be the first person to become an apostle and a prophet of God. There's a difference between you and your people. They don't know the praise, but you do. Amen. When you do what your people never did, you get what they never got. Hallelujah. When you shut your mouth and you can't praise him, they did the same. Therefore, we are sanctified by praise. Praise sanctifies us. Amen. Number two, praise produces joy and godly pressure. If you want to live a life of joy bumbling in your heart, be a praiser of God. Sometimes when you don't praise him, you find that your spirit is damp. Your spirit is down. You are feeling very low. You feel humiliated by things you can't see. But let me tell you something. Psalm, Psalm 16 verse 11 tells us that praise produces joy. Sometimes when you feel sad, 
do praise. It will kill the spirit of mourning and bring in the spirit of joy. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Oh my God, when we praise him and his presence comes, we start to laugh. We are full of happiness. The choir can tell you when they praise and they're in the anointing, they start to laugh. Joy begins to come upon them. I have witnessed that in this church. When we give God a good praise, when we give ourselves to that kind of praise, you start to see people in joy, bumbling, supernatural joy. Yes, you have not paid your house rent, but joy comes. Yes, you don't know what to do because your body is not well, but joy comes. Some joy that you can't explain, but it just comes. Brother and sister, that is the presence of God that has just hit you because you praised. Hallelujah. If you want to deal and blow to the unhappiness the enemy has put in your soul, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It brings joy and pleasure. The last point, not the least, it gives us victory of our enemies. Praise gives us victory of our enemies. Do you, are you facing an enemy you don't know what to do with? Praise him. Are you facing a situation you don't know what to do? If you are a husband, gather your children and your wife, push the sofa sets far, create a field in the sitting room if you are blessed to have a big house and start a praise we may not have a keyboard in that house but just start a praise let your wife dance let your children dance let everything happen for a moment and therefore we will tell you you are crazy but I guarantee you that is how you are going to pay the school fees the enemy will say you are crazy but I guarantee you that is how the healing will come the enemy will say you are crazy but that's how you are going to deal with the nightmares the family is having in the night when you do that kind of praise and you sleep you're going to see angels in your sleep your dreams are going to change because your house is full of the presence of God some fellows go to bed complaining that is why they see the crocodile some fellows complain before they sleep and they mama because of what God has not done instead of giving him praise and that is why their dreams are horrible try praise tonight hallelujah praise stares at the devil and tells the devil there is a line you can't cross Mr. Devil when I praise I am in my bed chamber with my husband and my husband is Jesus. I am the bride, is the bridegroom. And you cannot access a bed chamber where there is a man and a wife, you risk death. There are places the devil can't get and one of it is praise and worship. It is a difficult place for the devil to access because God is there. Hallelujah. We're going to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. The Lord spoke to me and said, God teach my people how to win through praise. Because I, I know, I know they have called on my name, they have fasted and prayed. Teach them now how to win. And he said, one of the things he's going to use for this church is praise. We shall praise until we buy all the land. We shall praise until we all get prosperity. We shall praise him. As a matter of fact, when you come to church, come ready for praise. Now look at your neighbor say, when we praise like this, don't think we are crazy. We have a revelation on this matter. Don't think we have nothing else to do. We understand what we are doing. Isn't it amazing? Leaders and so on and big people, uh, you will find them uh, dancing for the devil in the bar, but they feel it is silly to dance in the church. People easily dance for the devil, but find it embarrassing to dance for God. And I'm here to say to hell with the devil, we will dance for our God. We will not be embarrassed to dance in the church because our maker, we shall dance for him. I will not only wait for Tasca to influence me to dance. I will not wait for any wine to influence me to dance. I will be under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Please, when you see me shaking my body, don't think I'm backslidden. When you see me shaking myself in the church, don't think I'm of the devil. I'm just dancing for God because even David danced and the clothes fell off and nobody, God didn't complain. Tell me, tell somebody, let me tell you, stop saying I am possessed when I'm dancing because I don't dance like that in the world. 
if I do like that in the church, understand I'm under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I'm dancing for my God. You can't stop me from dancing for him. If I get drunk in the Holy Ghost, show me it. If I dance with angels in the house, show me it. But I'm going to give him a dance. We shall dance in this church until God will call the saints who have gone ahead of us in the corridors of heaven, in the balconies of heaven, and they tell them, look on earth. I have a church that knows how to praise me. I think we shall, we shall cause God in heaven to call David and say, David, come. Let's stand at the balcony of heaven. The great cloud of witnesses. Watch in Kenya. I have a church that knows how to praise me. I have a church that knows how to minister to me. Ah, every Sunday, I wait for HGC to gather because I know I will not be disappointed. They are about to minister to their maker. They understand I am the Lord their God. In HGC church, the men praise, the women praise, the children praise, and God will be boasting with us in heaven and they're saying every Sunday, I look forward to the Harvesters Global Church. We're gonna praise around here until God will stop everything in heaven and come and see our dance and receive our praise. We can cause heaven to come to a stand still. My God, because he will tell the angels, angel, you can dance for me. I know you know how to dance. Angel, you can sing for me with perfection. But you never had a problem with the house rent and danced for me. Angel, you never were sick and danced for me. Look at those people. They are in dire situations, but they are dancing for me. Your dance is more precious than the cherubims and the seraphims and the angels. Because they are dancing while in heaven. God looks at you dancing under the calamities of this earth. Your worship and the praise can never be compared with that of the angels. They have never been sick. They have never gone without rent. They have never been rejected. They live in the glory. It is easy for them to worship. My God, when a little saint and in heaven, under, under the heavens just does this, God stops to watch. When a little saint under heaven says, Hallelujah, I worship, God stands to watch because he understands you are doing it in the midst of hardships. It is precious. It is a sacrifice. It is a seed that is very expensive to give. So if your neighbor say, I'm going to do it. You have no idea how precious your praise is to the Lord. It is so precious because its sacrifice is huge. Hallelujah. I'm winding this stuff by reading 2 Chronicles 21 to 4. 2 Chronicles 1 to 4. I tell your neighbor, if you are getting tired of this, something is wrong with you. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and the others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Now we say the praise does what? It, in, it, it, it in defeats your enemies. When the presence of God comes through praise, it will defeat your enemies. So, so the people of Moab, um, uh, uh, they had come against this great king, anointed man of God. Um, and then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, And great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon, Tama, and Kedi. This bad news was brought to an anointed man of God. Tell somebody, anointed people can face trouble. He was the king of Israel, and believe me, was anointed by a prophet to reign. And therefore, never been deceived that when you are anointed, trouble cannot show up because it showed up on Jehoshaphat, it showed up on him. And Jehoshaphat feared, yes, indeed. Like the way you felt when the rent arrears came. Tell somebody, yes, Jehoshaphat feared. This was great turmoil that has come to his kingdom. He feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. 
Okay? So this man of God, we can see that he feared. So Judah gathered. Ooh. My question is, why not Levi? Why Judah? Israel has 12 tribes, but the tribe that gathered is Judah. So Judah came together because they had a revelation. Ooh. No wonder David is of the tribe of Judah. This is the son of this is the son of Benina, right? He's the son of um, the second wife of Jacob. Who was not loved? This is the son of Leah. And when she gave birth to this son, she called him praise, Judah. And said, this time, I will praise the Lord. So Judah gathered. And they gathered to ask help from the Lord. This time, Gideon did not come. Because this kind of battle, I was a cunning and Gideon. He attacked priests. Priests that are behind and down. Lakini he. I take to sprinkling of blood in ataka mungu mwenyewe. So Judah gathered to ask them from the Lord. And from the, all the cities of Judah, they came. Every Judah came. Ooh How I pray, we can all be a Judah. was everywhere then debt could not be paid there was bad news of cancer every kind of evil showed up on one man it was difficult the business had just been auctioned I'm using a metam metaphoric language now it was terrible time for this man but Judah From every city they came. And then we got to verse 13. Now all Judah with their little ones. It means we must praise with our children too. With their little ones we must teach our children praise. They gathered with their little ones, their wives and their children. Did I say the man to push the sofa set call his wife and children it is in the scripture they come with their children and they stood before the Lord I think they are standing there to intercede but let's see verse 21 verse 21 now when they began to sing and to praise oh the presence of the Lord came to deal with their enemy. These people, they came in verse 21. When they consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness. As they went out before the army and they were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy. It was just a one stanza song. They did not sing many. One, there was no bow, there was no spear, there was no weapon of war. It was just Judah and God. Mm. I will never be poor in my life. I know what to do. I will never be discouraged in my life. I know what to do. My enemy is in trouble. I have a secret of winning through praise. And then, verse 22 says, Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. 
who had come against Judah and they were undefeated. There are demons who rise against praisers. Imagine the thing here is they came against the king. But they were not after the king. In the realm, they were looking for Judah. Because it is this Judah who brings victory in Israel. So the devil now said, we will see who praises the Lord. So, even though they seemed to fight the nation, Kumbe, they were looking for the worshiper. Because they came and came to Judah, now we can see. If they were after the king, why are they going for Judah? If they are fighting the nation of Israel, why are they against the Judah? Ah, there are troubles that come to remove praise from your mouth. Yeah. There are situations enemy likes to bring around you to, he is after the praise, not your money. Because the source of your money is the praise. The source of your victory is your praise. And he knows if he takes out Judah, Israel is defeated. My God, there are some things you are facing nowadays so that you can mama and stop to praise. Ah, do you see in the wilderness with Moses, instead of praising, they murmured, they died, they never killed them. Suppose they praised, oh my God, check your name and say, Wow, what is making you to stop praising the Lord? It is an attack of the enemy. Tell them, when you don't praise, you are under attack. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. The enemy turned against himself. I didn't know. Ah, when you feel an oppression in the night, you can wake up and you start praise. And the witch will kill the other witch. Yeah. And the demons will start to kill each other. Yeah. And the people that had come together to take your land will turn and kill each other. Yeah. And that's how you're going to have your land back. Yeah. My God, I didn't know. I, I, thought, I thought God is far from me, so I complained. And the more I complained, the more the trouble. Oh my God, I didn't know. And they turned, the, the people who came against Judah turned and started to kill one another. The people of Ammon and, Mount si and, 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 and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy one. I prophesy that shall be our portion. Every time we praise, God shall deal carboniously with our enemies. Yeah. I prophesy over the children yeah. of Harvesters Global Church yeah. that today we have found favor with God yeah. and he's saying through the mouth of his servant yeah. and through his word, yeah. Harvesters Global Church, yeah. just give me your praise. I will deal with your enemies. Yeah. Just give me your praise. I will deal with your debt. Just give me your praise. You will see your house rent paid. Just give me your praise. I will give you favor with men. Just give me your praise. I will op When God loves a people, he brings them a revelation. Every time God is rescuing a man, he shows him a revelation. I hear God say, don't you ever stop what you started in Bankani. Don't you ever stop what you continued in Goan. You praised me and reservedly. You gave me your praises when you were small. You gave me your praises when you had no shelter for your own. You praised and danced for me when you had no room of your own. You praised for me. You praised me when you were small. Never leave that place. That is how I brought you here. That is how I am giving you this territory. That is how I am expanding you. Because this is your year of expansion. My children, 
whom I have brought from far, my children, whom I have, I have blessed, my children, whom I love so much. Don't forget your humble beginnings. Don't forget how you praised me until you fell on the floor. Don't forget that it is praise. It is praise in your lips. It is the praise I perfected in your lips when you were small that has brought you where you are today. I have given you a sanctuary. Yes, says the Spirit of God. I'll even give you a bigger one and a bigger one and I can give you the nation. But don't forget my secret. Come and minister to me. Come and minister to my need and you will see my glory. Magnify my name. Praise ye my name. Whenever you gather in this house, perfect your praise in me and you're going to see my glory in your marriages. You're going to see my glory in your finances. You're going to see my glory in your ministries. You're going to see me in your midst and even the enemy will know that you are my beloved. I hear this prophecy. The Lord is saying, my children, when you see the opposition of the enemy as a church, remember, he opposes a praiser. But the praise brings my intervention. He is a jealous devil. He is a jealous devil. That is why my son David fought many battles because of his office of a worshiper. That is why Judah had to face my enemies with their praise. That's what I meant when I said, the last time you go around Jericho, you shall blow your trumpets. I shall hear a noise and a voice of praise, and I'll bring the walls of Jericho down. Oh my God. And the next verse, as we complete this, my God, even if I don't preach, let us always praise. Even if we gather in the church, sometimes we can just gather and praise him. Don't be disappointed when you come to church and all we do is to praise and dance for him. Because we know what we are doing. Hallelujah. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude and there were their dead bodies. Mm. The enemy was bragging. I will kill you. You will never be married. You never get money. Their dead bodies was fallen on earth because somebody praised. Do you know nowadays there are people who are vowing somewhere you will never become? Do you know there are people who the devil is using very well? They saw you start a little project and they have vowed you will never finish. They are like Mount Shia and Mount Ammon. We got something they don't know. We got some praise. We got some tambourine. We got some vuvuzela. We got some guitar. Here we got some keyboard and drum set. I guarantee you when we do our thing, they will find themselves on the floor. My God. And then what is the end of the matter here? Let me show you the end of the matter. And there we have the dead bodies fallen on earth. None escaped. I prophesy. As we become a church of praise. As we praise him with all our heart and mind and our soul. None of our enemies will survive. I'm saying... The Lord God is not a God of partiality. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. The way he fought for Judah, he is about to fight for somebody in this house. If you're going to praise him with your stringed instruments, with your flute, if you're going to praise him with your timbrine, if you're going to praise him with your hands, with your feet, and with your dance, none of those people who have come against you, none of those who have bothered you, will be left standing. You shall look behind you and say, where are my enemies? 
The Lord will isolate you to give you victory. The Lord will isolate you to remove your shame and reproach. The Lord will clothe you. The Lord will clothe your nakedness. The Lord will meet your need because he's a jealous God and he will not allow Satan to touch a worshiper and a praiser. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables. Praise brings wealth. Oh, oh. Brothers and sisters, this is now not a spirit. It is wealth. This is something you can touch. This is tangible prosperity. And the Bible says they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies. For the wealth of the sinner is stored for the righteous. The sinner will amass wealth. Then he dies. Then the children sell it to you at throwaway price. I'm telling you now, it looks like a bad prophecy. But those who reject God, they amass and die. Then their children, careless children, because their father was never blessed. If they don't get saved, they sell you the car. A car worth 10 million, 1 million. A house, the, work, the father worked for all his life. House worth 100 million, you buy it 10 million. For the wealth of the sinner is stored. By the way, do not be moved. When people are building a house around you, left, right, center, and you don't seem to build yours, if they build in your plot, they will leave. Today you are driving a car that somebody else bought thinking it is theirs. He told them, you shall live in houses you never built. You shall benefit from fine yards you never planted. These people fell dead and they left everything. Now that looks harsh, but the people of Mount Moab, Moab and Mount Desia died. And they left the valuables behind. And let's read all the valuables because I prophesy that is your portion. Yeah. So they found precious jewelry which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. More than they could carry away. Because his name is God of more than enough. When God visits you, he don't need to give you what you need. He gives you an overflow. Yeah. So they got more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil. Ooh. Number three is very important. Because it means blessed until Jesus comes. Because he's resurrected on the third day. And the third day is the day of glory. Meaning this is a blessing that maketh you rich and adds no sorrow. Because it is called the third day blessing. My God. Let me say to all of you. I was not called to be your pastor for a joke. And when I stand here. I am not standing just as a mere man. I was given an apostolic office. And this office decrees, declares, and it comes to pass. Hallelujah. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka. For there they blessed, they blessed the Lord. Ah, when you get blessed, remember to bless the Lord. They gathered in the valley of Baraka. 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 Some of you are about to call your children Baraka. In the valley of Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of that place was called the valley of Barak, Baraka until this day. This place will bring us to the valley of Baraka. Say in Baraka. Baraka. The valley of Baraka, verse 27. Verse 27. Then they returned every man of, every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. My God, I prophesy of Harvesters Global Church. From today, may you rejoice over your enemies. May you rejoice over poverty now. Those deaths, you rejoice over them. 
that sickness you will rejoice because soon it will be nowhere. The Lord is wiping out your diseases. The Lord is wiping out your needs. The Lord is wiping out your debts. And you are about to rejoice over these enemies. In the name of Jesus. He's rolling away the shame and the reproach from your life. Amen. Somebody, doctor, gave you a bad report. Don't tell the people yet because it is going away. So they don't start saying you are the one who was sick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verse 28. So they came to Jerusalem with strings. Oh my God. You receive them blessing with praise. You maintain them with praise. Now this is the mistake people do. You are coming to church in Amatatu. You bought your Range Rover. You stop praising. You are without a job. They make you a CEO. You stop praising. You were single. You get married. You stop praising. Look, after they gathered all this wealth, they maintained it with the same praise. For with strings, instruments, and the harps, and the trumpets, they came to the house of the Lord. Don't get blessed and run away from the church. Don't allow your job to become a curse. When there is a meeting in the church, come running from your place of work. And they say, I have to go to the house of the Lord who has given me this job. Now, now shake your neighbor saying, don't allow that job to become a curse. Some believers forget too easily. When they were single, they went to church. After they get married, they endure their spouse. And they start to worship their spouse and they no longer go to church. Tell somebody, never enter that curse. Some people are all over pastors when they're in trouble. After they get money, they insult the same pastors. Don't enter that curse. Always remember to praise him. Tell your neighbor, if you received by praise, you will maintain it by praise. Stand on your feet so we can finish this service. Uh -huh. Slap your neighbor, say yes. It was not a long message. It is worth it. Hallelujah.